hey, credit the Knicks for fighting back. But the issue, Alan, remains these starts mm -hmm. on their home court. They were down 7 nothing, and they never recovered. Especially uh, on the weekends. We've got to take a look at that, what's going on on weekends with this team, because it's, it's, I think it's the fifth game they've played on a Saturday or a Sunday at home, and it's the fourth time they've been blown out in that game. So that's an issue you have to look at. The other issue, of course, remains the three-point defense. We talked about it in the pregame show. The Spurs are 30th in the league in three-point attempts, and they're middle of the road in three-point percentage. But it doesn't mean they don't have guys that can shoot if you leave them open. And once again, like we saw with Tony Snell and everybody else, Patty Mills, five for five from downtown. So he gets red hot, and that's a, a major area for them, uh, of course. But David Fisdale calling a timeout with two, two minutes into the game. Told you he didn't like anything that he saw from his team at 7 nothing. Called a timeout four minutes later, Wally. When a coach calls a timeout in the first six minutes of the game, two of them, he's kind of sending a message, isn't he? Well, yes. And if, if you're a player, you got to get up for your games at home. I mean, you should be ready to go on your home floor, excited to put on a performance for you in front of your home fans. And, you know, for the coach to have to kind of use those two timeouts early to kind of get you into into game mode, that's a, that's a little bit, of, that's concerning. That's a big problem. And the guy's got to be ready to play right off the bat. They got to know the Spurs are coming in, a team that's kind of struggling, obviously Kinda. losing eight They straight. lost eight in a row. They it's, played last night. Historic losing streak. You got to jump on them right off the bat. You got to show them you're ready to play. You got to come after them right at the beginning of that basketball game. And this Spurs team, they got comfortable on the Knicks' home floor again. Heard and they're before. allowing teams to get comfortable out there. Heard that before they shot very well. It's a, it's a skill game now as far as the, the the game goes. The Knicks' effort was good. Uh, especially on the defensive end of the floor, they caused 22 turnovers. But second they, half. This was all second <clears throat> half. It was points. The defense. Everything was what you're seeing. This, this, the box score to me is so. But overall, because they showed a lot of good things. Effort. They took care of the ball. They only had 11 turnovers. They forced 22 turnovers. Mm -hmm. It was just a shot maker's game. This game. You know, the Spurs. They shot high percentage. They went 12 they made of 23. 12 of 23. That's better than 50 percent. 12 of 23 percent from downtown. Yeah, 23. 53 overall in the game. They, they did it as well. The Knicks were struggling in the. Really, they got to over. They got the 43 percent shooting See, overall in the game. I thought but that first half they couldn't. Get really over interesting pregame. David Fisdale. We talked about the Knicks' defense improvement in the yeah. pregame, yeah. and and when we started the, the game, it's gotten better the last four games. And Fisdale credits the defense and the paint. Right. But the reality is, as we've talked about, they're still struggling to guard the three-point line. Well, you focus so much on the paint, and the game isn't really played in the paint as much anymore. Yeah, I think they're top, top ten in the league in, in their paint defense, but their three-point defense is, is continuing to drop now to a point. They're in the bottom third in the league in three-point defense. Now, Who they shoot cares? pretty well. Who cares? Who cares? I don't care the about the three-point defense. in the game. Make a else. higher percentage of your shots. The Knicks made 15 threes. So you want them to in the pregame, the you're talking about, oh, they need to attempt more threes. They need to get up above 40. They, they attempted 43. How'd they get back in the they game, They made Wally? 15. Okay? How'd they get back in the game? That's they fair. took 40 threes in That's this fine. game. That's fine. They don't take But their overall normally. field goal percentage is an issue. 43%. That's an issue. You've right. got to get your overall field goal percentage up. It doesn't matter how you get to around 50%. Even if you're shooting 43s, you got to be around 45 to 50 percent. As a team, you're saying. As a team, or you're not, or you're not going to win basketball games in the NBA, especially against. You know, the Spurs are going through a tough stretch. You know they're going to be a competitive team. They're going to figure things out. That roster's too good. They have two all-stars on that team and Aldred and DeRozan. That's a team that can play. They're going to come in here with a lot of pride. They're not just going to hand the Knicks a win at home that the Knicks really need. They're going to look at the schedule and they're going to say, oh, we're playing the Knicks at the Garden. This is an opportunity to break our eight-game losing streak. They came out like they're playing with a purpose. They hit the Knicks, and they punched the Knicks in the mouth in the first quarter, and the game was pretty much in the balance in the first quarter. It was a 28-25 eight-point game at halftime. 25 at half, yeah. 25. And then 25. it became 28 quickly yeah. in the second but, half. But I understand your point about how the Spurs were playing with pride tonight. Yeah. But this is the Knicks team that came into this game 4-10. and 10. I know. With they four should games play where with they hunger. started feeling good about the. So I'm saying. Like, like, when you say who cares, you got to – every little detail of the game matters. Yes, And, and no three-point defense, when you're in the bottom third in the league – that's a problem. It does, but still, I mean, then go make some more shots. I mean, then, then if you're going to take away one thing, then you're going to have to give up something else. In today's NBA, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no, there are no, like, you can't overanalyze games. You can be down 15. You can go on a run like the Philadelphia 76ers. You can come back and you're up five. That's the game nowadays. It's just, it's just. Do you, I, don't, I don't get your point. The, the, the analysis has been consistent in every game this season. 
I just we named all the players who have played but against overall, the Knicks. But overall, the Knicks threes. are a good defensive That's a major team. Issue. When you look at the Knicks' defensive stats, they're pretty good overall. Defensive field goal percentage is good. Their defensive rating is good. You got to take a whole entire game, not just oh, in the first half they gave up eight threes from San Antonio. They only gave up four threes in the second half, and that's why they made their comeback. You obviously, but you understand those eight threes led to the deficit that you had to now climb back from and, and play. They played so well in the second half, and it it led to what? Cutting it to what seven. What led to their deficit? Well, was only back, scoring like 38, White, 37, White, 38, 38 White points the, in the, the first Bulls half. Game, Devontae Graham in the Charlotte game. You can go on and on. Yeah, no. Again, Tony Snell went five for five out of the blue, six for six, whatever it was, out of the blue in that game. I mean, there's a that has been, if you're asking, what's the biggest problem? Three-point defense is consistently night to night the biggest problem. I and know. it led to a deficit that they had to chase the rest of the night. But if you're a coaching staff, you're thinking to yourself, okay, they're not a great three-point shooting team, so let's focus on that's not as much of our concern coming into this game. Let's focus on what they're good at, which is LaMarcus Aldridge, mid which is mid-range with DeMar DeRozan. And then all of a sudden, teams are just going off from the three-point line. You can't just overanalyze, try to take one thing away from a team because there's not enough of a little, you know, this is only the 15th game of the year. So you know the Spurs with what the numbers are saying. That's not really truly who they are. They have good shooters on their team. Patty Mills can shoot. Marco Bellinelli can shoot. DeMar, DeMar DeRozan is not a great three-point shooter, but he can shoot. So, I mean, Knicks just got to overall step up their skill level, their shot-making game.